We've reached a point in the surveying industry where there is little debate of the efficiency of capturing spatial data via laser scanning or photogrammetry. Unparalleled speed of data acquisition, data density that was once unimaginable, and being able to survey places that are too dangerous to physically put someone. These are just a few of the many benefits of this emerging technology. But with these new tools comes a new set of challenges. We often go to great lengths to capture these beautiful digital 3D representations of the real world, but then our clients, the ones paying for the data capture, often only get a 2D digital PDF of whatever data was extracted from the point cloud. If they're lucky, maybe they'll get a 30 second fly through animation. But what if you could deliver your point cloud directly to your client on a standard web page so they could view it in three dimensions, manipulate it, take measurements, and even extract actionable data? And what if I told you you could do that for free? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do exactly that. The third dimension PCV or point cloud viewer is a WebGL based point cloud render, measure, and digitizing tool that allows users to view and work with massive point cloud datasets directly in a web browser without the need for any specialized software. It is entirely based off Pawtree, which was developed at the Institute of Computer Graphics and Algorithms at the Vienna University of Technology by Marcus Schutz. All I did was go through the source code, make a few modifications to fix some bugs, adjust the CSS a bit to give it a custom look, and make some straightforward instructional videos on how to use its many features to the fullest. All credit for this amazing tool goes directly to Marcus and his team. He was extremely generous to provide his software to the world via a free BSD license which allows users to use the software for any purpose and to modify it as they wish. Pawtree achieves extremely fast loading times of point clouds through a technique that subdivides the data into cubes of varying size, each with a specific level of detail. As the user navigates through the point cloud, Pawtree dynamically loads and displays these cubes based on the user's point of view. Pawtree does a fantastic job of sharing your point cloud with clients, but it is capable of much more than that too. I don't want to spend too much time going over all the features and the value of Pawtree today, as I could spend hours doing that. Instead, today's video will show you how to upload and host your own data. If you look at the PCV playlist on my YouTube channel, you'll see a bunch of videos that I made that will show users exactly how to use the program to the fullest. I recommend starting with the crash course video to get a good idea of exactly what it can do. Step one, you will need a web hosting provider and domain, a place where you can upload the source code and your data to. I have a 100 gigabyte plan with Hostinger that costs me less than a couple dollars a month, but there are many other options out there. If you already have a website, then you should be able to use that same web hosting provider as long as you have an appropriate amount of storage or you could even create your own web server at home. Step two, download my modified source code from the link provided in the description. Unzip the downloaded folder, then drag and drop the libs subfolder into the root folder of your website. You can also use GitHub if you want to use the original source code. Just keep in mind the original code will have some bugs that need to be addressed first. Step three, you'll need to convert your point cloud into a data format that Pawtree can recognize and operate with. You can download the PCV converter from the same link I provided in my description, or GitHub carries the original as well. I changed some of the naming conventions in my version, and for the remainder of the video, I'm going to use those, but the process will be very similar if you want to use the converter from GitHub. The Pawtree Converter is the tool that converts an LAS to an octree level of detail structure that allows for the real-time streaming and rendering of point clouds. The converter can only work with LAS or LAZ file formats, so if you have another format such as PTS or E57, you just need to convert it into an LAS first. This is very easily done in Cloud Compare. 
Once you've downloaded and extracted the PCV converter folder, drag and drop it into your C drive. Open that folder and inside you'll see a text file called Useful Commands. Open it. At the top you will see instructions on how to use the converter. Press your Windows key on your keyboard, then type CMD to bring up the Windows command prompt. Copy the command next to number 1 and paste it into the command prompt and hit enter. We just told the command prompt to change the directory to the PCV converter folder that should now be on your C drive. File structure matters here, so make sure you're not placing the folder into a subfolder of C, or if you do, edit the commands as needed. Now we're going to run the PCV converter, specify the location of the input LAS, where to export the output files Pottery is going to create, and we're also naming the web page suffix here. For this example, our final point cloud data will live at www.yourdomain.com slash test underscore page underscore one dot html. All of this can and will need to be customized by you depending on the name of your input point cloud and what you want your URL suffix to be for future projects. For this exercise, I've supplied you with some test data to follow along with that's already in the input folder of the PCV converter folder structure. Copy everything next to number two from the text file and paste it into the command prompt and hit enter. The converter will now run. It shouldn't take more than 15 seconds to convert the input test data. Bigger data sets will take longer, but even very large data sets don't require more than a few minutes for the conversion to complete. Now if we jump back into the file explorer and open our output folder, you'll notice two folders and an HTML file were created. The libs folder is the unmodified source code that will run Pottery. This should be similar to what you've downloaded in step two if you chose to get your libs folder from GitHub instead of use my version. There may be some minor differences depending on how files get updated as bugs are found and fixed. We can ignore this folder. There is also a newly created point clouds folder. Inside that folder, you'll see another folder with the same name as the URL suffix you specified. In there, there will be four files that make up your point cloud data in a form that Pottery can use. Drag and drop the point clouds folder and the HTML into the same folder that your libs folder lives in on your web server. And that's it, you're done. Open up a browser of your choice, enter in your domain, backslash, and then whatever you named your dataset as. For the example, it will be the test underscore page underscore one dot HTML. From here on out, to upload a new dataset, you only need to repeat this conversion step. For every new dataset you convert, you just need to grab that point clouds data folder and drop it into the point cloud folder in your web server and drop in the new HTML into your web server's root folder. Once you get the hang of it, it really shouldn't take more than five to 10 minutes to convert your data and place it on your web server. If you want to customize the way that your data looks, that might add maybe another 10 minutes or so. Let's take a look at how to do that next. Step four, customization. Now, while your point cloud is up and running, there is a lot of customization you can do at this point to give your client a more polished product. All of the edits we are going to do in this video are done in the HTML file. You can make all of these same changes before you ever upload your HTML to your web server if you'd prefer. You can open your HTML with Notepad or use a code editor such as Atom or Visual Studio Code. Just note that if you're editing on your web server, you may need to clear cached images and files to see the changes you are making take effect. So if you make an edit and don't see anything change after reloading the page, try clearing your cache. We'll work our way from top to bottom as we make our edits. Starting off in the header, let's change the title. This is what appears in the tab of your web browser. Now let's jump into the viewer settings. If your data is in feet, you'll want to change the default units label to feet. We can also do that here with the command viewer.setLengthUnitFT. Since this data is in meters, we'll change it back. We can also change the default view when the page loads. To do this, navigate to your desired view. Open the scene section of the sidebar and click on the camera. 
you'll see coordinates appear for the position of the camera and the target point it's looking at. We'll need these in a moment. We'll want to use the commands viewer.scene.view.position.set and viewer.scene.view.lookat. Now just copy and paste those values from the sidebar. And we also need to make one last quick change for these to work. Scroll down to the load point cloud section and comment out viewer.fit to screen with two backslashes. Next, we'll start editing the load point cloud section. Let's set our coordinate system so that we have a key map automatically populate in the top left corner of the screen. I know this particular data set is NAD83 UTM11 North, so I just need to tell Potri that. To do this, you need the proj4js code and the epsg number, which can be found online fairly easily. I use epsg.io for this. If you Google EPSG and your coordinate system, it should come up at the top of your search. Scroll down, click on the Proj4JS tab, and copy this code to your clipboard. Now navigate back to your HTML file on your web server and paste it right above the code that loads to the point cloud. You also must tell Pottery that the point cloud it's loading is in this coordinate system. To do this, simply add the command pointcloud.projection equals EPSG, and then your EPSG number, in the point cloud loading section. Now when anyone opens the page, they will know exactly where their data is in the world if the data set was geo-referenced. We can change the name of the point cloud that is displayed in the sidebar. This can be useful if you have multiple point clouds on the same page. For example, if you have an exterior and interior scan in separate clouds, or if you have multiple scans of the same site on different dates. This is done by editing the second value in the load point cloud command. The default point size type is set to adaptive, which means the size of the points will grow or shrink to fill in gaps between neighboring points. Sometimes I prefer adaptive, but other times I prefer a fixed point size, especially for smaller, denser data sets. For LiDAR clouds, I typically select a fixed point size. To change that, we edit the material.pointSize type line to read fixed instead of adaptive. When we do this, sometimes a point size of 1 is too small. We can edit the line directly above to change this. The default shape of the points is square, and in my opinion, this isn't very visually appealing. Let's change that to spheres by editing the material shape equals pottery.pointshape.circle. Circle needs to be capitalized here. That about wraps up the typical changes I make regarding how a point cloud looks. Sometimes I'll have a request from a client that wants some of their own branding on the web page. Let's explore how we can add a hyperlinked logo at the top of the page. We'll edit the command viewer.setDescription that's right underneath the other viewer commands. Inside we need to href the target website point to the image source and set the width of the logo. I will put a list of all of the commands I've used today in a text file in the same downloaded link in the description so you can copy and paste them into your HTML and edit as desired. Next, I'm gonna show you how to add additional point clouds to the same page. We'll run the PCV converter again in the Windows command prompt. This time, change the LAS name to test underscore data underscore two dot LAS. Once the converter has run, grab the test underscore page underscore two subfolder from the output folder and drop that into the point clouds folder on your web server. Next, open your original test underscore page underscore one HTML and copy the command that loads the point cloud in the set of brackets after it, then paste that after those same brackets. Then just edit the file path of the metadata.json file and the name of the point cloud. We may want to add in a command so that when we load our page, both point clouds don't load on top of each other. We'll use the e.pointcloud.visible equals false command on the cloud we want to remain hidden once loaded. Point cloud data has been around long enough now that most savvy clients know what they are and have an idea of how to work with them. If we're not already at the point of needing to be able to deliver point cloud data in a convenient form that anyone can utilize without having to download specialized software, we will be very soon. I encourage everyone out there collecting point cloud data to have a means to do so. 
This isn't a sector of the industry you want to be a late adopter to. In my opinion, scanning and reality capture is the future of the industry as far as data capture is concerned. Pawtree isn't perfect, but considering you can upload your data in under 10 minutes, have it polished, customized, and delivered to your client in under 20, and it's free? In my opinion, that's pretty remarkable. So take advantage of this tool, wow your clients that aren't used to seeing their data in the third dimension, and get a leg up on the competition that refuses to adapt to new technology. Thanks for watching, and as always, subscribe if you want, like if you feel it's warranted, and I'll see you next time.